We've learned a lot about nature and scientists keep finding out more. They travel the world to study animals, ecosystems, weather and more. We learn some of this from cool documentaries like Planet Earth, but there's one place we still know very little about, the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. It's super hard to send people down there and robots can only see so much, so scientists are still trying to figure out what's down there. This list will show you interesting and even creepy facts about the deepest parts of the ocean. These are things we don't fully understand yet, but scientists are really curious to learn more. The unknown can be spooky, but it also makes things even more interesting. Before we get started, be sure to smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell for more such amazing content. Octopus Pals Back in 2020, the documentary My Octopus Teacher was released. It followed the story of a man named Craig Foster and how he spent a year bonding with a wild octopus in the Great African Sea Forest. The documentary was a huge hit, landing on Netflix and being streamed by tons of people. It also won Academy Awards for its incredible story, cinematography and artistic focus on Foster's unlikely and apparently very strong relationship with a wild octopus. Through it all, it asked a very big question. Can humans and wild animals legitimately ever be friends? And with octopuses specifically, are they smart enough and sensitive enough to bond with a human being that enters their habitat? While my octopus teacher argued that it is in fact possible, the jury on the question of friendship is still very much out as far as scientists are concerned. Oceanographers and marine biologists know quite well how intelligent octopuses are and there's no doubt that they can recognize humans whom they come to know and even trust. But the question remains, just how deep does that relationship go? How tightly can a wild octopus truly bond with a person who swims down into their habitat? We may never know the answer to that question, but if we somehow did ever learn more about it, that could open up a whole lot more information about the psychological and emotional lives of other wild animals in the deep sea and elsewhere. The Bio Duck in 1960, a peculiar sound resembling deep-sea quacking and dubbed the bio-duck was recorded by submarine personnel off Western Australia's coast. Despite its bizarre cadence, the sound's origin and creator remained a mystery for five decades. The bio-duck became one of the deep-sea's persistent enigmas. In 2014, a partial breakthrough occurred as scientists identified Antarctic mink whales as the culprits behind the mysterious sound. However, the reasons behind the whale's production of the bio-duck call remain elusive. Occurring predominantly during the austral winter in the southern ocean near Australia, the sound is frequently heard in shallower waters. Following this surface activity, mink whales swiftly dive into the deep, leaving researchers with an abundance of unanswered questions. The purpose behind this behavior, whether it serves as a mating call, a signal to feed, or something else entirely, continues to baffle scientists, contributing to the enduring mystery of the bio-duck in the depths of the southern ocean. Life's origin? Life is believed by some to have begun on Earth about 4 billion years ago, but the exact location where the first simple cells are believed to have formed remains a mystery. Many experts think it might have happened in the deepest parts of the ocean. In 2017, paleontologists discovered tiny tubes and filaments made of material called hematite in rocks that they believe formed between 3.77 billion and 4.28 billion years ago. These rocks are part of the Earth's ancient ocean crust, they say, usually recycled through a slow process. However, these specific rock fragments didn't go through this recycling process. The microscopic tubes inside them provided a breakthrough for scientists. In the 1990s, a NASA chemist proposed a theory that life began in the rocky pores of hydrothermal vents in the oceans. The conditions needed for life to start supposedly included the right temperature and alkaline consistency of fluids rushing through the vents. Most ocean vents are too hot and acidic, except for a rare formation deep in the Atlantic Ocean called the Lost City, where conditions match those supposedly required for life's beginnings. While we can't be certain, some scientists believe they may have found a link back to the origin of all life on Earth through these unique vents in the lost city. Thriving on plastic? Talking about plastic in the oceans, there's a big question about how life is surviving and even doing well on the plastic trash in the sea. 
In 2018, scientists studying debris in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch found something unexpected. Among the garbage in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, they discovered tiny marine animals like crabs and anemones. These animals usually live on beaches and coasts, but somehow they were going all the way to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, thousands of miles from any coastline. Not only that, they were multiplying and thriving there. Normally, the open ocean is tough for small marine animals, which is why they usually stay near the coast for protection. Now, they might be doing the same with plastic in the ocean. But how they got there in the first place is a mystery. Did they attach to plastic when it first entered the ocean and then hold on for months or years before reaching the garbage patch? Even more puzzling is how they're thriving among all the non-biodegradable trash. Most life would struggle with such conditions, but these tiny marine animals seem unaffected. It's like they've created a whole new ecosystem out of something so unnatural. The challenge is, scientists have no idea how they managed to do it. Where's all the plastic? We know that quite a bit of plastic pollution is being dumped into the ocean, either directly by people littering en masse or indirectly as it washes down from rivers and streams. But once it gets there, where does it go? That question might sound simple, but amazingly, it's not. Sure, there are things like the Great Pacific Garbage Patch that effectively hoovers up quite a bit of the plastic that's being dumped into the ocean at greater and greater rates, but there are still veritable tons of plastic going into the oceans every year that simply cannot be accounted for by environmental scientists. Where is it, and how did it seemingly just disappear? Oceanographers are still desperately trying to understand where all the ocean plastic that gets dumped winds up. Is some eaten or consumed by animals? Do some descend deep into the sea and wind up in nooks and crannies far away from prying eyes on the sea floor? Cynically, oceanographers have taken to calling this the question of dark plastic, and they simply don't have an answer for it. 99% of all the plastic is missing, oceanographer Eric Van Sabiel informed the world in a Vox podcast recently. We oceanographers don't have an idea where most of the plastic in our ocean is. We've lost it. Well, that's creepy. What makes up a rogue wave? Sailors worldwide have long shared stories about rogue waves, sudden and towering sea swells that can be devastating. For centuries, these accounts were met with skepticism from the scientific community. Scientists believe sailors might be exaggerating or misremembering amidst the challenges of navigating rough seas. However, on January 1, 1995, a significant event changed the narrative. The Dropner gas platform in Europe's North Sea detected a colossal wave measuring an astonishing 25.6 meters, almost 90 feet. This wave appeared unexpectedly, towering over others in the area, challenging previous estimations. This event provided concrete evidence that rogue waves do exist, validating centuries of sailors' reports. Despite this acknowledgement, scientists remain puzzled about what triggers these waves to go rogue. Even after nearly 30 years since the Dropner incident, oceanographers have not unraveled the mystery behind these unpredictable and unexplained phenomena. While researchers hope one day to understand the mechanics of rogue waves enabling them to warn ships in advance, this remains an elusive goal. The enigma surrounding the nature of rogue waves persists, leaving experts with unanswered questions and the potential hazards they pose to sailors at sea. What's in the twilight zone? The deeper you go into the ocean, the less sunlight gets through the water. When you go down a few hundred meters, you start getting into water where it becomes more and more difficult to see. About 656 feet or 200 meters below the surface, there is a specific area called the mesopelagic zone. More commonly and more colloquially, this region is known as the twilight zone. There, sunlight fades nearly completely out of view, and the further down you go at that point pushes you into complete ocean darkness. As the sunlight fades then, so too does our knowledge and understanding of what goes on down there. And while 200 meters may not seem like a very long distance compared to how deep some of the world's oceans are, our scientific expertise pretty much peters out at that point. We're not kidding about that either. Take it from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution expert Andone Lavery. It's almost easier to define it by what we don't know than what we do, he said on a recent Vox podcast. It's remote, it's deep, it's dark, it's elusive, it's temperamental. It's tough and costly to get cameras and things like that down that far in the ocean, 
and shining lights to be able to see anything that's floating around pretty much instantly alters the environment and how the fish there interact with each other and the light that now occupies some of their ecosystem. Thus, it's incredibly difficult to get any kind of reliable data or observational notes on what happens in this twilight zone. And as far as we know, it's all pretty much a mystery, still to this day. Got GPS? Just around 20% of the world's ocean floor has been mapped, leaving a vast majority unexplored. Modern technologies like multi-beam sonar systems have enabled mapping of some areas, revealing the topography of the ocean floor. However, a significant portion remains a mystery to scientists, lacking information on its features, elevations and connections. To put this into perspective, the bottom of the sea is more mysterious than the surfaces of the Moon or Mars, given the limited exploration of the ocean floor. Whenever explorers use specialized underwater cameras in various parts of the world, they often unveil never-before-seen spots, adding an element of both fascination and eeriness. As of late 2023, only 24.9% of the global seafloor has been mapped, leaving three out of four square miles unexplored. This knowledge gap extends beyond remote areas in the Pacific Ocean, even within the United States territorial waters, approximately half of the ocean floor remains unmapped. In essence, our understanding of what lies beneath the ocean surface is remarkably limited, making it an understatement of monumental proportions. Got mud? As if the mysteries of the deepest waters of the ocean weren't weird enough on their own, there is another major question down there that the scientists can't answer. What's up with the mud that sits right under the very bottom of the water? That area of mud and settled silt is commonly known as the Mohorovisic discontinuity. It's one of the most unknown parts of the entire world, while also still having major implications for how the Earth works, how tectonic plates shift around, how earthquakes come to be, and more. About 60 years ago, scientists had a crazy idea for an experiment. They wanted to drill down all the way through the bottom of the seabed and see if they could bore a hole into the mud way down there. They were hoping to gain access to the Mohorovisic discontinuity and in turn pull up an actual piece of the Earth's mantle. A layer of Earth that deep is something that no human has ever been able to observe before. The experiment didn't work, unfortunately, and experts weren't able to bring up a part of the mantle at all. Modern-day scientists are hopeful that it could yet work one day with better technology, but until that happens, we'll have to be content to stick to what we know about the Mohorovisic discontinuity, next to nothing. Deep Sea Bigfoot? Hey, Bigfoot enthusiasts, we've got some news for you. Bigfoot isn't real. Yep, it might be disappointing, but despite all those blurry videos, there's no actual evidence of Bigfoot roaming around in the forest. No bones, no proof. Time to let go of that idea. But wait, there's still hope for mysterious creatures. Deep in the ocean, below 656 feet or 200 meters, scientists say there could be some Bigfoot-like beings, or maybe a bunch of them. The ocean's deep, which covers a whopping 85% of Earth's living space, and it remains a largely unexplored mystery. The ocean's depths are massive, and even though life down there is tough, with scarce food and limited visibility, it's a vast area teeming with unknown biodiversity. Some scientists think there could be up to 10 million different species living in the deep sea, more than most of us can imagine. Surprisingly, we've only scratched the surface, as the majority of these species remain unseen and unidentified. Could there be an underwater Bigfoot hiding in these depths, or perhaps multiple unknown species? Scientists are diving deep to uncover the secrets of the ocean, so who knows what they'll find next. That's all for today. The ocean's vastness holds secrets that continue to elude us, from unseen creatures to unexplained phenomena. The depths remain a captivating mystery. Each new discovery only deepens our understanding of this incredible and still largely unknown world.